Oh, uh, we're up to half base, amid base, the penultimate line. Reb Shimon Berebi Kayale Nidra. Middle of the very second to last line. Yes. Now we'll get there momentarily. After he kicked him out onto the porch. What? We have a dead person today. Yes, we do. I think so. Uh, today the is the seventeenth. Today is seventeenth. Yes, today is the seventeenth. Oh, there is no. Dead no, person. not today. today is... <laughs> I mean, there may be, but they're right. not listed yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Our learning sponsors. A uh, year of learning, many friends of Stephen Vigdor, Lezeich Nishmat Simcha Melech Lemeir Leib Halevi, friends of Marcy Kurtz, in memory of her great niece, Leah Bracha, Isaac and Evelyn Blachor, in memory of his sister, Chaya Rachel Bas Isser, friends of Leoni Meiselman, Leah Saber Bas Chanoch Zundo. We have a month of learning by Ron and Susan Podolsky, in memory of his father, Tzvi Ben Pinchas, by Charlie Gelfenstein, in memory of his mother, Dasya Gittelbus, Mayor Halevi, and his father, Mayor Ben Yaakov. A week of learning by Clara and Jonas Weiser, who happened to be here, uh, in memory of her mother, Hannah Bat Getzen. Susan Fuchter Kramer, in memory of her late husband, Rav Shmuel Aharon mm -hmm. Ben Ephraim Fischel. And we have a day of learning, mm -hmm. uh, no days of learning today, okay, but there will mm -hmm. be one for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They may have. They right. at, at this point, basically, we, at this point, since we are the first official shear of the day, okay, we res we do that whole thing. That's not important. We do it because nobody else. Does. Well, we are the, still the first official shear of the day. That's right. Because I was asked because they stopped doing it in the other shoe and that, and I was specifically right, and then I was specifically asked that as the first shear of the day to do it. Okay, and when you're asked by the board of directors, you whoa, okay, <laughs> okay, so we left off yesterday. On uh, Kaf Bay's Amud Bay's, about three lines down from the bottom. Okay, so that's where we're holding as we start. Okay, with another example of a request for annulment of a vow. Okay, and uh, in quick review, we know that. Uh, We've talked about the fact that whether it's based on harata, ways of finding a petach, the whole que one of the questions I think Hesha you asked or someone asked was the whole issue of could a sage uh, release himself from a vow? Okay, okay, and we have mm -hmm. clear uh, example Michael gave yesterday based on the rosh. Okay. That uh, that is not a viable option. They learn it from the Pasa. Okay. And so as we go into today's Gemara, okay, uh, we will see, okay, other examples of situations of, <coughs> excuse me, of trying to remove, <coughs> get removed from a, I'm just going to get some water, get removed from a, um, and they're there, okay, is it up to the individual? To, can the individual do it on his own or not? Is problematic. So we're going to see an example of two. That uh, will deal with that topic, and that's where we're where we're starting now. Okay, 
So Gemara tells us as follows on the bottom, Rabbi Shimon Berebi, right? Rabbi Shimon, the son of Rabbi, Havale Nidra Lamishra. He had a vow for which he would like to be uh, released. Atele Kamaihu de Rabbanan. He came before the rabbis, Amrele, and they said to him, Nadart Adaata Dahachi, did you make this vow under these circumstances, so to speak? Amar in, he says to them, yes. Adata Dahachi, did you make it under these circumstances? Right? And yes, Kama Zimnin. So, in other words, he indicated he kept the same answer along a number of times, okay, that he had, that uh, despite looking for, all right? Uh, he thought it all through. Right? Without, in other words, the question is, had he, what was his initial intent to rule? Uh, and remember, we were saying that the concept here is to remind us that the lave and the mind, and one's heart and mind must be together, yeah. okay? In terms of uh, making this vow. Okay, so what is your intent? And does it parallel what you're saying? All of these things. Right? So what happened? The Gemara picks up now on today's daf, Kaf Gimel, top of the Amun, right? Vahavu mitztarein rabbanan, mishim shalatula. And this uh, distressed, I'm going to use the word there, the rabbis from, the, from sun to, da, to shade, umitula l'shimsha. Okay, and from the shade to the sunlight. Okay, so there are two ex two pshatim here. One simple pshat, as Michael just said, is that they were bothered that it took them all day. Day, throughout the entire day, they argued, they discussed back and forth and things like that. The second pshat, which uh, I don't like as much, but it's important to keep in mind, was that they that the houses were built in such a way, and Art Scroll says, that part of the house had a roof and part did not. And at part of the day they would meet in the unroofed, the, you know, and part of the day they would meet in the shaded. Early area. and late, okay? they needed the light. But so in other words, they would go they back, the, the fact that they went back and forth and back and forth gives you a sense of to what degree the, the search for a petach in this situation so distress them. That's the implication of either shot. Okay, mm -hmm. now, okay, so now we have a section in the Gemara that's in parenthesis, okay? What happens is we're going to come back and take this section, okay, and uh, use it in another later down on the Amr, okay? What's so, the difference if the heart and the mind are together or they're not? Okay, because it indicates whether or not the person gave advanced forethought, okay, and, and so intent, okay, advanced forethought and intent in terms of making this vow. So if you did both together, is that better? Than that is, as right then together. it becomes a valid. Okay, it becomes much harder to, much harder to do. To, un to, to undo. No right. To undo. If you knew that he would hate you forever when you still made it up. Yeah. In other words, if, and, one of, if one of those is, is not good. Right. That is an easier way, way to release the person from the vow. Right? Okay. Okay. So what happens? So as I said, we're going to take this section in parenthesis, okay, and uh, and we're going to come back to it, okay, in shortly. So we're now four lines down on the top of Kaf Gimel Amud Aleph. Amarle. So he said to him, okay, the following: Bitnet bere the Abba Shaul bent bitnet. Okay. So we have. Uh, Another example, a bitnit is the name. is the individual's he was a great the name. Of Chauvin. Okay, he was one of the members of this band. Right, right. So, in other words, uh, this particular individual, <coughs> who's the son of Abba Shaul Ben Bitnit, so interesting, we can see named he's already his named name. after his grandfather. Father. But the important element is he was involved in the discussion <coughs> regarding this situation of the son of Rebbe, 
as to whether to find a peta. Right. That's the point that we need <laughs> to keep in mind. Mina dart adata de mitzare rabbanan mitula leshimsho mishimsho latula. Had you known that by me, I'm translating it this way. Had you known by making this vow that would have distressed the rabbis all day long, back and forth, back and forth, all right? Had you known that, in the essence, would you have made the vow? Amar, he says, lo. No, I would not have made the vow. Vishay yuha. Okay, and they then released him. Okay. Okay. No, in other words, had he realized that by making this kind of vow, it would have distressed his colleagues to the point that they would have been so fahitzed about trying to come up with an answer. Well, that's why it said that. That's why yeah. Uh huh. And it took all day asking him if he knew this, would you have? Because he did both. Yeah. Yes, because and in other words, if it's I ask. You know, uh, if the policeman stops you, Heshi, when you're driving at 75 miles per hour on a 40, on a 40 mile per hour roadway, did you realize that you were going 75 miles per hour? Yeah. Did you realize, didn't you see any of the stop signs? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What about the old lady? <laughs> notice okay, in other words, so in other words, but, so that's, that's the kind of questioning the based in must have done to him to clarify, was he in clear mind and intent when he made those decisions? And to answer that, I would say, had I known the policeman was there, I would <laughs> Okay, so that would have been a have So that would have well, been that's an example. Be the next right, that's okay. how, how, uh, un, how unusual. <laughs> Does it have to be okay to, for it to be a, to be, right? You know. So now we see that Bitnit has given an opportunity, given an out, a petach, all right, by which the rabbis could then release, release him from that vow. But what that would be all right if the policeman had asked them, if you knew I was going to give you a ticket, would you have speed it? He would say, No, that's right, that's a petach. That's a passage. That's exactly. That's exactly the kind of case, right? Okay. Had I seen the, the light flashing behind me, I would have slowed down. Okay. The only difference is that here, it is less connected than the police. Right. Because all of the more connected rationales to be Montenegrin he said, the truth is, I thought of all those things and I didn't care. I made the matter anyway. anyway. So well, this is almost out of, uh, out of uh, it's a last resort on the part of the Rabbanan. Well, if you knew you were going to make us spend all day on this, okay. would you have made it? All right, and again, he finally says, right. No. So let me, let me, let me, I use the word distressed, Mitzahare. Okay. But I could have used the phrase, what happens if they, it would have caused the rabbis to be angry, okay, at him under the circumstances? There's a reason I, okay? They're both, well, valid, they're translations. They're both valid translations. And, and now I want to, as we look in the next piece of Gemara, we'll see that right. kind of juxtaposition, okay? Exactly. Okay, exactly. Uh, I don't know if it was a dry cleaner. Okay, Rabbi Yishmael by Rabbi Yossi, Havale Nidra la Mishra. Rabbi Yishmael, the son of Rabbi Yossi, had a vow that needed to be, uh, you know, annulled, right? Atta le Kamei de Rabbana, and he came before the rabbis. Amrule, they said to him, Nadart Adata Dahachi, did you make the vow under these circumstances? Amar Lahoim. He said them yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Nadart adata dahachi. Did you make the vow under these circumstances? Okay. Amar laho in. He said to them yes. Okay. Kama zimnin. Again, a number of times. Okay. So again, these, this back and forth questioning implies that he was very clear in his mind, in his heart, in his intent, however we want to structure that. All right. 
Kevan de Chaza Hahu Katsra, the Mitztare Rabbanan. Since they a particular launderer, I'm going to say saw the degree to which he was causing difficulty, and that's how I'll translate Mitztare here. Okay, to the rabbis, right? What did he do? Machye Baochla de Katsre. He struck him on the head with the sprinkling can. Okay, watering can. Okay, is what he did. He struck him with the watering can of the launderer. Amar. He's, he's uh, right? defending the honor. So what happens, rabbi. right? Uh, that's in his opinion. That's, that may be his opinion. That wasn't how I suppose no it was, though. So. All right. So what happens? Amar, he says, Adata Damache Li Katsra. Okay. On the not had I the knowledge that the the launderer would have struck me in this situation, okay, lo nadre, I wouldn't have made the vow. In other words, had I realized that I would have distressed the rabbi so much, caused them so much pain and anguish and discomfort, okay, that it would have caused somebody else to take it out on me physically, I would not have done it, okay. Vashaye Lenafshe, and notice what the Gemara says now. He used that as he used that as a petach, as a rationale to say, therefore I I would I I shouldn't be. He didn't mention the rabbis. He only mentioned the fact that he hit him in the head. What? No, he's okay. In other words, the 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 fact that he was struck by the launderer was because the launderer who may have been a, I don't know if he was an Amharetz or not, we don't know. But in any case, he thought he was defending the honor of the rabbis. No. So you're walking down the street and someone beats you up. That's not grounds to be mocked right? or It's linked. It's linked. It has to mm -hmm. be. Vashaya Lenafshe. Okay. The rabbis released him, or he released him. No, he, no. He, released, he, released. he used the lush and he released him. Based means right. He to said to the rabbis, he, "Here's in other a words, good." Pet okay. House. In other words, he indicated to them but that I would not have made such a vow. If I as knew a, I was going to get okay, beat up. As a result of that, therefore, somebody, the others on the base in were then able to release him. Okay, the fact that the language says Vishaye Lenafshe is appropriately problematic, and that's why Zev's question was valid. Because we've had this now five times. Yes, right. but the point is still, we've already said that it's very clear that the Gemara's attitude is the sage cannot exempt himself exactly. under the circumstances, but he can at least, however suggest a, an, an awareness that under certain circumstances I wouldn't have made the vow, which therefore allows the based in or the single uh, Rav who's ever got, been, uh, the authority to exempt to do so. Okay. All right. Let's go on now. Right. Uh, now we're going to get to a piece here where we get a response to this situation, okay? And we're going to see that not everybody is happy with this approach, okay? What happens? Amar le Rav Acha mi Difte le Rabbin. Okay, so Rav Acha from Difte is questioning what just this, this story and what transpired. And he's asking Ravina, is this a viable means, okay? Hi, no lad who, but this is really an unexpected development. The fact that the launderer struck him with the, he had no with the reason thing. To think yeah. about such a thing at the time okay. he made the nether. Right? In other words, th it just happened at that moment. How can you say, how can ex you accept that idea that had he known that somebody would have struck him, would have been a reason for. Uh, not, not saying the vow, because there's no way that he could anticipate <laughs> the fact that somebody was going to be there and would hit him. But he did anticipate the fact that he would distress the rabbis. 
We don't Even know that. We don't that's know that. That's more logical. That's more logical. Yes, because but, you know yes, that yes. the Chacham is being right? very great. Yes, yes. Okay. So that's his, I, that's his question. Isn't that an unexpected development? And how then could you use that as a peta? That's the point. Okay. So what happens? The loma seek adate, that it's not possible that it would arise in his mind, the machile katra, that the launderer was going to be hitting him. Utnina. However, we have learned elsewhere in a brighta. Ein potchim lo benolad. Okay, that it's very clear that we are not allowed to use as a petach an unexpected development. Okay, now I will tell you also uh, those who are using Art Scroll, make sure you read all of note number seven in Art Scroll on this, on this particular item. The second part of the note is very significant. Okay, I won't go into it. I didn't bring my art scroll. I don't feel I have to read it for you. But I'm telling you, if you have art scroll, make, make a mark or a note to read it. Okay. Amarle. Hi. What? Yeah. Hi, love. No him. So Ravina answers him. No, this really isn't the situation of an unexpected development. <coughs> Why? The shechiche afikurai the mitzare rabbanu. Why? Because there are irreverent individuals who frequently uh, annoy bother, the annoy the rabbis. But does that mean that the beat, the beat them up? No, the question really is, it's a good question, Zeb, but the implication is, who really is the irreverent person? Is it the launderer? Okay, or, the guy who makes or, oath. or is it the guy who makes the oath? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's the point. That it happens often enough that people annoy the rabbis sufficiently for someone to come to his defense. Okay. So it's not really out of level. It's not, in other words, it's not a unique situation, is what he's saying. It's not an unexpected it's situation. Okay. Do uh, you want practical examples of that from the, <laughs> from your from the rabbinate? Okay. Right. Okay. I've been there, done that. Okay. All right, the so that's the point. So in other words, Ravina is saying, no, that is clearly not an example of an unexpected development. Situations occur, okay, that somebody, uh, this is disrespectful to the Rabbanus, okay, and to the based in, and mm -hmm. therefore others take it on if their this, own. If disturbing to the based in is ground, this is like a corollary. If they hadn't shown distress, this guy would have mind, minded his own business. So it was an inevitability from the distress, and therefore it's a package. Let me, okay, let's go on to the next piece. All right, now, this particular episode is significant for a number of issues, which we may <laughs> review after we read through the Gemara. Okay. The second wife, we should know, of Abaye had a daughter from her first marriage, okay, and was now appropriate, mm -hmm. and we need to know that this daughter is adult. She's now 12. Okay, adult means she's at the age where the, the uh, family members do not arrange a marriage for her. She may choose on her well, own. They still arrange. She has the right to opt out. Well, it's the point. not a father. Okay. All right. A... Who Amar? Okay. So Abai suggests to her, Le Kravai, why don't you marry her off to one of my relatives? He Amra Le Kreva, and she disagrees and says, I want to marry him off, her off to one of my relatives. Okay? Amarla, Abaye says to mm -hmm. her, Titsara hana'ati alach i avart ada'atai. Okay? That i making a vow, a neder, that if my benefit to you is forbidden, if you disagree with my 
intent, my mindset, my desire. Marry her to your relative. Okay. So what happens, says the yeah, what what Erwin? Uh, uh. What? Abaye. Nobody is smart when it comes to arguing with his wife. Everybody let's, gets emotional. Let, let's just say that mistakes. in the heat of the argument, okay? All right? Now, the question I would ask, it's a good pointer when I'm going to use it to jump off and say, is the question here that Abaye is really arguing that he wants this girl to marry his relative? Or is the question that Abaye is arguing with her whether she has the appropriate she role, the right, to the right to marry this girl off, as opposed to the girl having some choice in the whole issue? Here the girl has the circumstances. He is saying, look, I'm the husband. I think you're supposed to listen to me. And if you're not going to listen to me, there are going to be consequences. That would be a different shot. Okay. Anyway, I'm like to think that Abai is defending the, the young lady. Giving any, giving any choice. She's she can refuse. Relative or her relative. But she can refuse. Yeah, but that's not part of the story. No, but that means that he would know that and he could be defending her status too, not yeah, just he, defining that's his too own. too modern an approach. <laughs> Please. Okay. It's too modern an approach. He says, "Look, I know what's best." For well, I, okay. I don't know. I about you about you know. All right. Okay. Well, what happened? Umin sabat la likravai, and she ignores him and married the daughter off to her relative. What did Abaye do then? <laughs> okay. Azlat va'avart al daate ve'in sabat likrava says the mish the Gemara. She went and went and crossed his double cross. No, she went and the, the, if you didn't listen to his mindset, and she married the girl to her relative. Atalakami de Rav Yosef. Abai comes to Rav Yosef. and he says to him, Ilu hava yadat da avart al da Had you known in advance that she was going to ignore your viewpoint? Umin sabala lekreva mi adarta, and go ahead and marry the girl to her relative. Would you have made the vow, Amar? Lo, he said. Then no. In other words, so what happens? Vasharye Rav Yosef, and Rav Yosef then exempted him. All right, canceled his vow. I could point out here, Abaya was the gadol hador. He and but he still went to someone else to be matir the neder. That answers definitively the question. Can you do that? It see, I, I, that you may be right, but I don't like that shot because he went to his Rebbe. Rav Yosef was he his Rebbe. Rebbe. Okay, right. so despite whatever status Abaye had, he knew he had to go to somebody greater than he. So he went to his Rebbe, Rav Yosef, to see if he could be mater than Eden. Okay. All right. It could be. But I'm saying, why then say that it was Rav Yosef? Why does the Gemara tell us that? Okay. Mi share ki hai gavna. Okay. Right. In other words, so he asks, what, you know, give me the details what happened. All right. And yes. Okay. But Hatanya, aren't we taught elsewhere? Maseba Adam Echad, Shahadir et Ishto, Mila Alot Laregim. Don't we have a text that tells us about a situation where a man once took a vow regarding his wife, prohibiting her to participate in going to Yerushalayim on the holiday? Va'avra al da'ato va'al talaregim. And she uh, disobeyed his view, and she went to observe the holiday in Yerushalayim. Okay, uba lefnei Rabbi Yossi, and that man came before Rabbi Yossi Amarlo, and he said to him, "Ve'ilu hayit yodea sheoveret al da'atach." Had you known that she was going to disagree and uh, disobey disobey your view, 
Volela Regel, okay, Klum Hidarta, okay, and go and observe the holiday, okay, in Jerusalem, would you have made any kind of vow? Amar lo, lo. And he said to him, no. Vihitiru Rabbi Yossi. And Rabbi Yossi then uh, exempted him. Okay. We don't know. Then, then he had, if he had known that this was her common practice, then he would have known in advance. He would have divorced her by now. Okay. And then he wouldn't have, then why would he have made the vow? He shouldn't have then made the vow of Chachima. So in that case, there wouldn't have been enough. These are considered vows of persuasion. They're okay. not considered. All right. I like the fact that you use the word vows of persuasion because I did not like either Art Scroll or Koren's explanation of uh, Nidari. What? Nidre Zeruz. All right. I didn't like. That. Yes. No, I understood which, which, that. Which are encouragement. But you're okay. saying persuasion. Okay. As we get to the next Amud, okay, we're going to get to this phrase, okay, to indicate what kind of a vow it might be considered. Okay. And, and it, since you brought it up already, let's introduce it and then we'll go on with the next we mission. We had it in the previous mission. We did, but the, it's going to be discussed more in detail now. Right. Okay. So we have, we're going to get to a new Mishnah where they indicate there's such a thing as Nadarim Zeruzi, okay? Uh, and Michael's translation was of persuasion or uh, encouragement. encouragement. In other words, the example that Gemara gave in the past was two people dealing with a business deal, okay? And one said, I'm not, I'm not gonna sell it for this. And one says, I'm not gonna buy it for this. And then they Meet each the make a, a, a vow. And I in doing I so, okay, now. I won't go below X. I won't pay more than Y. And therefore, they meet in the middle. And neither needs to be mocked in there. Okay. All right. And the implication of the Gemara is that this kind of a vow does it be given its nature that it's, according to the Art Scroll translation, motivational. But I still didn't like that translation. But it's or, sort of a recognized negotiation process. Correct. Yeah. In other words, you're using it to persuade or to encourage or something like that to do something. It's like the guy says to his kids, if you don't eat your Wheaties, we're not going to the beach. It, he doesn't really mean it. He's trying to push the kid to eat his Wheaties. The motive here is money, basically. In that case, well, in that here, example, like, right, in that case, but it doesn't always have to be that a monetary motivation. In this case, it is. Okay, in the initial case that the Gemara yes. brought to it was. Us. Okay, it was. But we're going to come back to this now example as we continue with our new Mishnah. Okay, three lines up in the bottom of Kaf Gimel. All right, Matt Neaton says our Mishnah, Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov Omer. Okay, take the example of one who makes a vow that he wants his neighbor, his friend, okay, to uh, eat, to dine with him. And he says, and there's a question of whether we need the word lo there in the Gemara. Call Nedir Shani Atid Lidor, who batel. Name any vow that I in the future might make will be considered null and void. Okay. And this is only appropriate and able to be applied so long as the time that he remembers it at the time that he makes a vow. Okay. So that's, we're going to refer to that in brief. Gemara. And when he says that any vow that I in the future will make will become null, okay, does that mean that the guest does not listen or doesn't come forever? Okay, so the Gemara. That it doesn't work when it's right. Okay, in other words, that doesn't motivate, and that's why El. Uh, Art Scroll uses that 
translation sure. doesn't motivate the person to come and die. Okay, so that's how I can at least partially accept Art Scroll's translation, okay, of, of calling it a motivational medal. Okay, mm -hmm. what happens? The Gemara continues. Chasuri mixerava hachikatani. There is something missing, and this is how we have to teach it. One who wants his neighbor to dine with him. And the neighbor refuses. Yeah. Okay, and he makes a vow. This is to be considered a kind of persuasion, motivational, exhortation, vow, okay, encouragement, that kind of term. And these vow, this variety of vow does not need a petach, okay, does what? not need yeah. any kind of, of uh, a method for exempt. They are not a valid vow. But if you do it. Oh, wait, okay, okay, hold on. Vaharot seh. Shalo yitkaimu nidarav kol hashana yamod berosh hashana viyoma. But one who does not want to maintain, fulfill, okay, his uh, any of his nidarav. any vows, all right, should get up on Rosh Hashanah, all right, and say kol neder shani atid lidor. Any vow that I will in the future make. Yehe Batel should be now Ubilvad She Yehe Zachur Bishaat Haneder. But so long as it will be remembered at the time of the vow. Okay, we could call it, as I say, motivational, exhortation, pressuring, whatever. This ties in now with the mindset. Because it, no matter what you said, if your mindset is that none of your Nidurim and you remember it, then obviously you don't mean the netter despite what you, you said. said. Right. Okay. So now the Gemara picks up. All right. What happens if you remember? What happens if you don't remember? Izachur, if you remember when you said a vow that you had made a previous statement that all my vows at the beginning of the year don't mean anything. Therefore, akre I. Okay. Right? Okay, in other words, what happens if you didn't remember? You've removed, obliterated this conditional statement that you made back in Rosh Hashanah. Because the, you now made a nether and you okay, knew because, that you made this condition. Right, and therefore, the Kayem Leila Nidre, and therefore it becomes a valid vow. Okay? Because you made it in the spite. Despite, despite the fact that you had made in advance a statement at the beginning of the year that any vow I might make throughout the year should be considered null and void. And you knew that you re made and now, that. Yeah, right, and, and you made the netter anyway. Right. And you made the netter anyway. Exactly. You see, in, in that case, it's okay that the netter stands? Yes. Then yes. it will stand. That's right. one side That's of the one side of That's one side That's of the argument. Right. Now we're going to flip it. Okay? Tane, and we teach. Ubilvad shalo yehe zachur b'sha'at the but this is such that we teach it only where the person did not remember at the time of the vow. Rava Amma, this is Rava. Le'olam kid amrin and me'ikara. No, we say that this is as we said initially. What are we talking about here? Kigon shehet ne berosh hashana. As a situation where he made a, the condition at the beginning of the year. But what happens if he doesn't know? Okay, in other words, he might remember he made a vow, but he doesn't remember the details of the vow or the specifics of the vow. Okay, Art Scroll's example is the person says, I vow that I won't eat bread for the rest of the year. Okay, but then when it comes time, all right, what happens? Gee, did I make that vow on bread? Or maybe I made that vow on wine or cake or something else. Okay. 
and now that he makes a vow, if he remembers it at the time of the vow, okay? And, and he says that I base it on my initial vow way back at the beginning of the year. That it won't count. That it it's not going to count. Nadre, and then he vowed, lit be mashasha. There is no substance to that vow. Okay? Lo amar al dat rishona ani no dare. But if he doesn't say, okay, and doesn't remember, okay, remember either, okay, that it was based on that earlier Rosh Hashanah statement that any no vows, any vow I make valid. doesn't valid. What happens? Then it removes that condition and then that vow is present and still stands. Does he have to remember at the time that he makes the vow? Yeah. Yes. Ten later? No, no good. At the moment. He has to have it in mind when he utters the vow. Right. That he doesn't really mean it. Right. Okay. So what happens? Rav Huna Bar Chinena Savar Lemidrashay Bapirka. Rav Huna Bar Chinena was in, of the intent to teach this in a public lesson. Okay. That the Durham don't count because you said Kol Nidre. Amar le Rava, and Rava responds to him, Tana Kamisatim Lastume, that the Tana who taught this did it so in a uh, I'm going to say, I don't want to say secretive, but I want to say in a manner discreetly. that it should not, discreetly, thank you, that it should not be made public. That's the point. Is there any onus for making a foolish vow? Yeah. Yes. Sure. So would you say that if he remembers and he does get mouth then, Yeah. And he's making a foolish vow? Yeah, sure. No. No, he's not. He's making the. Oh no! If he, if he, oh, well, if he remembers that he made the vow. Yeah. No, if he, he made the vow and he makes the vow anyway, he's, he shouldn't. He's he should, you're not vow. supposed to do that. He but that was a protective device so that you yeah, aren't. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about. Does he get an onus for it? Yes, he gets Malchus. That's the point. Okay. Okay. Mastim leistum. There's the essential message of the Gemara for this moment, that so people would not be lightheaded. They wouldn't take vows lightly. Knowing they won't be valid. Okay, knowing that they would, okay, A, knowing that they might not be valid, and B, knowing that if they were to make it, they get off the hook. Okay, that they could. So then nobody could be trusted. Right? Okay. Wait, and you want to make this public. statement public, all right? So he asked, so the question then quickly was asked, right? Do the rabbis disagree with the view of Rabbi Eliezer or not? And furthermore, and if you want to say plege, that the rabbis disagree with Rabbi Eliezer. Hilchata kivate olo. Is the law like him or not? Okay. And then the Gemara is going to tell us. Okay. Uh, furthermore, about, okay, another example of situation with vows and with gifts. Okay. And uh, we can pick that up tomorrow. Just in time. Okay. In time for what? In time for what? Okay. Oh, okay. you have to dive in with them. Ah, uh, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, we will continue tomorrow with that. Uh, the new example. I'm doing a new uh, tomorrow is you. you, you. I'm doing. It. Yeah. Okay. I was prepared to go up the first few lines. Yeah, I'm but it, this is the beginning of this. It's a, release, yeah. So it's a good place to stop. All right.